Hi writers and readers, I'm Christy Stratus and today's video is really about challenging myself. I'm trying to hold myself accountable, I'm trying to challenge myself because I have been trying to finish the edits on Lock and Key for a while now. I've had them for a while, I wanted to finish them before April, it didn't happen, and now I'm challenging myself, I have to finish them this weekend, I'm telling you guys that I'm going to finish it this weekend, and that's that. It has to be done. So hopefully this will hold me accountable. Here's the reason why this is happening. Yes, I'm busy, but the whole thing is with lock and key, I'm having a very hard time letting go of the characters in the story. And even before I had finished writing it, I started getting really, really sad. The idea of leaving the story and not actively being in it anymore is difficult for me. And this is different from Anatomy of a Darkened Heart, where that happened when I, after I hit publish and was very excited and the book was published, then I had that little, that low for like a couple of days. This time it's happening before I even had finished writing it. So that's what has been stopping me. It's been a little bit weird to deal with because it's kind of new, but this is what I'm doing. You guys are going to hold me accountable. I have to be finished by the end of the weekend. These edits are not that hard and there are not a ton of them either. So that's it. It's happening. So while we're on the subject of accountability, I thought I'd share a couple other things that sometimes help people hold themselves accountable to reach their writing goals. And then you guys could tell me what you do because I'm really interested to know what other tips and tricks that I could use too. And I'm sure everyone kind of needs these tips. I can't remember if it was on Facebook or where it was, but there was a writer who said that he actually, he wanted so badly to write this book. And I don't even know if he had started it or or not, if he had not started it at all, but he really wanted to write this book and he couldn't get himself to do it. He was either too nervous or too scared or he couldn't find the time, whatever it was. Some people genuinely can't, but in his case, he knew he was delaying. And so he decided that he was going to buy something, put out this cost so that he had to force himself to create the product, the book, to make that money back. Whether it's actually gonna make the money back, who knows. The whole point is he wanted to make that money back by putting out this product, the book. He decided to buy a Chromebook. I don't remember how much they are, they're not as expensive as regular laptops, but it's still an expense. And so he decided that with that expense came the responsibility of having to finish this, write the book, finish it, and put it out there. And lo and behold, it really worked for him and he was able to go every single day, I think it was, either every workday or every, every day in general, to like a Wendy's or something and he wrote there every lunch hour and it really worked just because he knew he had spent this money and he had to make it worth his while. So that was cool. I tried the same kind of thing with Anatomy of a Darkened Heart. I really think that with Anatomy, it was heavily, yes, that I wanted to prove to myself that I could write a novel. Yes, that it really, I needed to write that particular book. It was like dying to come out of me. Also, NaNoWriMo helped a ton. Also, I had just discovered this whole writing community online made a big difference, but I also wanted to try the same kind of thing. Buying something where I would say, okay, I need to make this money back, or you know, I need to make sure that I hold myself accountable and say, this needs to be worth the purchase. I love journals and notebooks. You guys probably already know that about me. I've done some serious journal loving videos. I love them and I had never really spent significant money on one. I would buy less expensive ones, ones on sale, things like that, which is completely fine. But I love really unusual journals too. And there are so many that, that cost more money at Barnes and Noble or they cost more money on Etsy, wherever. Now I mostly buy from like indie places like on Etsy. At the time, uh, Barnes and Noble. And so I decided I was going to buy a very unique notebook that I really wanted so that I would have to use it for Anatomy of a Darkened Heart. And it was just another way to not give myself an excuse. And that's where this notebook actually came from. This is like a dream notebook. And I had seen it and was like, man, that is the coolest notebook ever. I really, really wanted it. And I thought, you know what? If I say it's for Anatomy of a Darkened Heart and that's the book I'm gonna publish, maybe I'll be that much more likely to publish it. And even maybe that even helped me get past the editing stage and publish it because I knew I had bought this for some, ugh, I don't remember how much it was, but it was like, $40 or something like that where I was like, okay, you know, I don't know what book sales are like. It was my first time ever and uh, you know, but if I could make this money back, that'd be really cool if I could just use this as an accountability thing. And I did and it did work out 
Like I said, there are other factors, but still, it was really exciting. That was just another way to get myself to, and I still, I'm using it for the entire Dark Victoriana collection. And I've showed you guys this notebook before. I put all kinds of pictures in. I put all kinds of notes in. I put them in, you know, unusual ways, normal ways. Uh, I've talked about sort of breaking the way um, notebooks are used and just sort of going all over the place so that you can break any, like, sort of boundaries that you might have. Um, and that actually made a big difference too. And I think that one of the reasons I was willing to do all of that was because I had paid a large amount of money that I was not super comfortable with <laughs> for a notebook. And then I had to use it. And it forced me to write in ways that I was not comfortable with, breaking the norms of notebooks and the ways that I was using them before. And it really opened up my creativity actually. So now that I'm getting more into it, I'm realizing just how much it accomplished to have that you know, that money that I spent. You don't have to spend any money to have accountability. I'm telling you this on YouTube. It's free for me to put up a YouTube video. So, lock and key. And it's done at the end of this weekend. Oh my goodness, that will make me so happy. Let me know your accountability tips and tricks. I'm very interested to know. I'm sure you guys have some awesome ones. And as always, thank you so much for spending time with me.